everyone, and welcome to Golden Artist Colors. I'm Kevin Greeland. We also have someone in our chat, a material application specialist, and she'll be answering all your questions. If you don't get your question answered, you can always email us at help at goldenpaints.com. Today we're going to take a look at art that stands out, uh, achieving thick impasto texture with uh, acrylic paint. So let's take a look and see what we mean by impasto. So we'll switch to the overhead. And so impasto just simply means as a technique that the paint is applied thickly and it will retain the brush stroke of a brush or the marks of a palette knife or whatever tool uh, that we're using. So here's just an example of uh, an impasto painting and another where we just used a palette knife and applied that real thickly. Um, depending on what you're going to be painting, one of the things that we kind of recommend um, would be to go with a wood panel rather than a canvas, because depending on the material that you are using, um, you don't want to create a lot of sag. Uh, so consider a wood panel um, or something that's sturdy so you don't have a lot of um, sag with the materials. But one of the materials that's very lightweight is light molding paste. And this is our light molding paste. It's 50% lighter than our regular molding paste. So we're going to be taking an in-depth look at that. But let's start with the basics. We'll talk about some heavy body and then we'll get into some mixing. So here we have our heavy body paint and our fluid paint. And so you can see it would be really hard to achieve uh, a lot of texture with the fluid paint. It's pretty flat, self-leveling. Even with some brush work and palette knife work on here, you can see it, it leveled out very well. Um, compare that to our heavy body, and you can see I was able to get some dimensional texture there on the side by just squeezing it out of the tube. And then down here, I was able to manipulate it with a brush and palette knife, and it retained a lot of those brush strokes as well as the marks of the palette knife. So if you were going to be applying this very thickly to your canvas or to your wood um, palette, you're going to be using up a lot of paint. So an alternative to using up a lot of paint could be to mix it with a medium. And in this particular case, the medium that we're using is light molding paste. And so I have light molding paste right here. Uh, it is opaque. It's a lightweight acrylic texture medium. And we mix it with our heavy body and our fluid. And you can see the fluid, as I said earlier, when you mix this with the molding paste, depending on how much you put in there, um, this is going to be a little bit softer than if you're using the heavy body um, and mixing that in there. So I'm going to do a little mixture so you can kind of see. Um, some people like using fluid because it's a little easier to incorporate, but I think uh, the heavy body does works just as well. So light molding paste. And we'll put out, uh, this is Napful Red Light, heavy body. And depending on how much you put on uh, or in your mixture, um, you'll see there is a little color change, and we'll be looking at that too. So I'll start with the fluid and mix that in. And you can see how quickly and easily we're able to incorporate our fluid color in there. And you can see that light molding paste really does hold those kind of peaks and palette marks, whatever texture you're using. Let me grab a clean palette knife and we'll do the same then with the heavy body. So that's the light molding paste mixed with fluid. And now over to the left here, I'm going to do our heavy body. Uh, again, I'm just going to fold that in and start mixing. And you can see it, it really does mix very well and just as quickly as the, the fluid. And again, you can see it holds that texture, the palette knife, whatever you're doing, it's going to hold that texture. Um, so you can see here wet kind of to dry. 
There is a little bit of color shift. We have a video that we'll watch a little bit later showing that, but something to keep in mind. Again, depending on how much paint you're putting in here, you're also controlling that shift. Um, in addition to the light molding paste, we have a number of other paste that we can use. And so we'll take a look at those. This is the light molding paste again, mixed with a heavy body and a fluid. Here we've taken that light molding paste again, same mixture that we talked about before, mixed it with the uh, naphthol red light. Here we have our regular molding paste, that is this one, semi-opaque acrylic texture medium. Um, it's kind of a satin finish because of the marble dust. And then we have our coarse molding paste. Um, this is a lot rougher, it's almost like a sandpaper feel to it. But um, mixing those, you can see, um, depending on brush or palette knife, um, it can hold the palette knife very well, the light molding paste, and even the brush strokes that we have down here at the bottom. And the same is true for the molding paste. Uh, of course, you can see the sheen's a little bit different with the molding paste. And then we have our coarse molding paste. So all of these are great options for creating that uh, impasto texture. In addition to paste, you could also consider using a gel. And with the gels, remember that the gels come in different sheens. And so you have either a gloss um, or semi-gloss or even a matte. And so this very first one is regular gel gloss right here on the right. And the one in the middle is the heavy gel semi-gloss. And then the one on this side here is the extra heavy gel matte. I started with the regular gel because it's the one most similar to our heavy body paint uh, in terms of consistency. Um, again, you can see um, mixing the color with these, you do get variation. Um, this has the matting agents in it that's matte. Uh, this is the semi, and you can see it's still a little wet down there in the center. That will clarify as it continues to dry. And then this is the gloss. And so we say they are transparent to translucent, and that does impact the sheen, as well as when you do the texture, you can see kind of see how the light plays off that, if we look at that from the side. You can see in the middle there is the semi-gloss. On this side here, we have the gloss and then the matte. Bring that into focus, there's the matte. So that's with a gel. So all of these can work, paste or gels. In addition to those, we have kind of specialty gels or paste. Um, they have different materials in them. So right now we're looking at our coarse pumice, our extra coarse pumice and our clear granular gel. So the coarse pumice is here in the middle, and the extra coarse pumice is to my left, right here, and then the clear granular gel is right here. Again, um, this clear granular gel, remember the acrylics, um, like the gels, are kind of a milky white when wet, and as they start to dry, they begin to clarify and become more transparent or translucent, depending. Again, you can see that variation in color shift with these. Uh, in this case, we're using our heavy body benzamidazolone yellow light, and we just mix those ahead of time. But if we take a side look, we can really see that texture. Again, the one in the middle that my finger is on is the coarse molding paste. And then to this side is the extra coarse. And here we have the granular, uh, clear granular gel. So let's switch to the overhead. And again, you can build that texture up. Uh, Again, with a palette knife, smooth, or a lot of texture, and with the brush stroke here, you can see a lot more evident in the granular gel, unlike the uh, extra coarse pumice. So all three of these 
whether it's the aggregate gels or our regular gels or our paste are all good combinations for creating impasto effects um, without using up a lot of paint. Uh, we have a short video that I want to show you, and it goes over um, two things. There is a color shift when using these products, and that varies from which one, whether it's a paste or a gel. And there's also some shrinkage, and those vary too, whether it's a paste, a gel, or an aggregate. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first video. It's going to show you the color shift. Now it's real quick. Hopefully you can see that. And then the second one will show you, oh, let me go up ahead, we'll redo <laughs> that one. <laughs> Hopefully you can see the color shift a little bit more. There you go. Then let's take a look at the shrinkage. So this is showing you the uh, heavy gel gloss, the molding paste, and the extra heavy gel. You can see that shrink down. And that shrinkage is, you know, kind of relative to all the products. Um, and, and just depends which one you're using, whether it's the light molding paste or a gel. So something to keep in mind. Um, again, it's kind of hard to control that color shift, um, depending on how much paint you're putting in there to keep them uniform. Um, so you kind of just have to go with the flow on that. One of the other things I wanted to point out is mixing those colors. So we have, this is our regular gel gloss. Uh, and as I said, um, it's kind of milky white when wet, but as it dries, it um, becomes transparent or translucent. And we're using our heavy body ultramarine blue. Uh, and I just used the palette knife and applied that with texture um, and spread it thin. And then you can see I started to mix color uh, into the gel. And we kind of did this at a 5% uh, percent and then 15 and 30. Um, so you, uh, you can control the color if you look at the side. Again, these would change depending on whether you're using the gloss, the semi-gloss, or the matte. And so really, if we look at that first one, we, we sometimes you'll hear people talk about gel extensions or extending your paint. Um, all of these products can be used uh, to extend the volume of your paint um, and to create that kind of impasto texture. So that is our gel. Take a look at the paste. Again, the paste is light molding paste. And let me pull that one out and take a look. So a light molding paste, and that's what the material looks like. You can see we've applied that um, rather thinly here, and then with a lot of texture on the top, and then we used our heavy body. This is our naphthol red light, and then we've mixed those again um, kind of to that 5, 15, and 30. You can see, uh, again, variation in color there, and that's dependent on the um, amount that of paint that you're putting in there. And you can see the texture of the paint by itself and the sheen of that. The light molding paste then at the 5, and then 15 and 30 on the end there. And this is true, too when we mix it with an aggregate. So here we've mixed our uh, coarse pumice gel. So the coarse pumice gel, or excuse me, that's the extra coarse. Uh, this is the extra coarse pumice gel. And that's what the material looks like inside. Um, it's kind of gritty. So when you put this out, you can hear that grit. And you can see that shift too. Again, kind of a milky white um, when wet, but as it dries, um, that material becomes uh, more evident. Again, here we're using our heavy body. This is the benzamidazolone yellow. 
and I'm mixing in again 5 and 15 and 30. So uh, in reference back to those other videos, there is a color shift and there is some shrinkage of the product um, depending which one you're using. Let me go ahead and move this one out of the way and we'll take a look at the light molding paste and some color mixing. So here I've applied just light molding paste by itself and then I used our ultramarine blue and mix that in um, and then use the benzomidazolone yellow and mix that in here and then I just kind of mix those together on my um, board um, creating the green value. If we look at that from the side we can kind of really see that texture. And so I thought we'd go ahead and just kind of mix one so you can see that color shift a little bit. So I'm going to take the dry one and lay that aside. I'm going to take the light molding paste. And again, I'll put out a kind of generous amount. So you can see how easily I can build up that texture pretty quickly. If we look at that from the side maybe, you can really see those um, peaks. Yep, nice. All right, so I'm going to do a little of the benzmanazolone yellow light. And if I wanted this darker, I could, you know, double this up and put more in there. And then the same with the ultramarine blue. And let me mix those up. So I'm just going to fold this and again, whether you like fluid or heavy body, you'll see it's pretty easy to incorporate um, rather quickly into that paste. Again, this is light molding paste we're mixing. And um, the light molding paste in particular with the other paste tend to kind of go more to the pastel side because you're working with that white. We'll incorporate the ultramarine blue in here. So you have both the yellow and blue there from the side. So you can see even just with my palette knife, I'm able to create some really kind of tall peaks and texture. If I went in there with a brush, and brushed out, you can see it also picks up those brush marks. And if I was doing this on my canvas and I wanted to mix right away or on a board, I could just start folding in some color. And you can see it's just like really like mixing paint. I'm just getting my blue and yellow combined there to create an additional color. And again, you can see on the side there, if I just move this down a little bit in front of the camera, there we go. Uh, you can see how much texture you can really build up there um, and how it retains those little peaks. If we take a look back at the red real quick, you can see again from the side, you can really see these peaks along there and how um, you just leave the product, it will dry exactly like that. On this one, I flattened them out a little bit using my palette knife. But again, you can kind of see here is the, put these kind of side by side. You can see the shift um, in the color while it's wet um, versus when it's dry. Now, I didn't really measure these exact, um, but there is a little color shift there. If we look at it maybe from the overhead, we could kind of do a little side by side. So you can kind of see there is a little bit of a shift. Um, it can go kind of to that pastel side as it dries. So that's our light molding paste mixed with heavy body, and the heavy body was the benzomidazolone yellow light and the ultramarine blue. 
along the same lines of being um, working kind of white, we have our fiber paste. And so these are just, uh, again, additional options. Um, our fiber paste is an opaque medium that dries to a kind of a fibrous texture. And so you can kind of see that texture in here. This is the light molding, I mean, excuse me, this is the fiber paste by itself on the top. And then again, the same benzmidazolone yellow and the ultramarine blue mixed in there and then mixing those together. Um, if we look at that, yep, from the side, you can see that beautiful texture. And again, this one would also have a color shift and shrinkage um, that we talked about. The one thing I thought we'd take a look at here, this is using our, um, this is the extra heavy, <laughs> extra heavy gel semi-gloss. Um, and um, so that's the product by itself dry. Again, applied it with a palette knife, mixing with the benzmidazolone yellow and the blue and getting that, the green mixture. Uh, again, the same idea with the paste is just that, remember, the gels will, you know, become transparent or translucent depending whether you're using a gel or a mat, uh, excuse me, a gloss or a mat. You can see the gel milky white when wet, but will dry to transparent or translucent. Another one that we have is the coarse pumice. So on this one, we looked at the extra coarse. And here, we're working with the coarse, so a little bit finer texture. And again, you can see the product applied by itself. And I'll scoop some out so we can take a look at that wet. So here's the product by itself, and this is dry. It's been dry for about two days. Uh, I mixed in the yellow and the blue, and then we got these kind of green-blue values. Um, but here is the product by itself. And again, you can kind of hear that gritty sound. This has a nice feeling like a, blick, a, a brick or a cement block. Um, but again, uh, dries lots of uh, texture there. Um, and um, the color mixture, again, a shift in color. And you can see that compared to the uh, extra coarse and the coarse. So another thing to consider is how we combine these together. So in this particular one, if you wanted to, for some reason, you can combine these. The acrylics all perform uh, nicely with each other. So this is using the coarse uh, pumice gel. And I mixed in that same benzmidazolone yellow. And then here is the regular gel. And this happens to be the gloss mixed in with the ultramarine blue. So we're going to do a wet demo of that so you can kind of see what I'm talking about for the gel. This is the regular gel gloss. And you can see very milky white when wet. And we'll put a little bit of the heavy body ultramarine blue to mix in. And then we need our coarse pumice. And hopefully our material application specialist is answering all your questions. So this is the coarse pumice. And that's the one that has that gritty texture. And to that, we're going to add some of the heavy body benzmidazolone yellow. And we'll mix those together. And again, if you happen to have a fluid and that's what you want to use, that's perfectly fine. Uh, all of uh, these are compatible and mixable with each other. Just know that, you know, depending on the sheen or the texture, they will impact each other um, in that regard. And then here's the heavy body I'm mixing in with the regular gel. And I said the regular gel is the one most like the consistency of our uh, heavy body paints. 
and again milky white so that color shift becomes more apparent as it dries but if I wanted to for some strange reason um, just like I did on this one I could combine if we go to the overhead yes um, I can combine the gel with the pumice um, so we'll just do a little bit of that right here and I start to get my green value but you can hear all that delicious material moving around and so this can be done on your palette or right on to your substrate that you're painting on but all of the gels and paste can be used to create some texture so I'm going to pull those back out and we'll do a quick little recap and hopefully that recap will cover all of your um, questions and I have a nice little eye candy one to show you so in terms of impasto texture creating a lot of texture without using a lot of paint gels and paste are a great alternative to mix with your paint um, here we have our light molding paste and our molding paste and our coarse molding paste and they all will give you some sort of texture you can see I can get them fairly smooth remember that smooth is a texture um, or um, in sheen too you can see the difference here between the light molding paste and the molding paste and the coarse molding paste again even with a brush you can see how they each retain those brush marks slightly different so light molding paste this first one here if you're working on canvas or maybe a linen light molding paste is something you definitely want to go with because it is lightweight 50% lighter than a regular molding paste and then you don't have to worry about the sagging issue or stress on the canvas um, but if you're going to go with molding paste or coarse molding paste you might want to consider a wood panel with the gels uh, the gels range from gloss to semi-gloss to matte um, and can be combined with the paste for some reason if you'd want to um, you can tell that these tend to go to the pastel side because you're working from that base of white with the gel because they're transparent or translucent um, you don't have to worry about that kind of pastel tone and then we have our aggregates um, this happens to be our coarse pumice, extra coarse pumice, and then our clear granular gel here at the top. This could easily be glass bead gel as well. So all of these can be used to create that kind of impasto texture. And then the last one, um, this was the light molding paste mixed with the clear granular gel just for the heck of it. Um, you can see this is starting to dry. I put it on very thickly, so in the middle it's dry, but there's still a little milky whiteness there as it will dry. Um, but I mix those two um, together, and you can see from the kind of the side angle there, you can get a lot of texture. Again, both with the molding paste and or the granular gel, and then combining them. I'll slide that down so you can see the two at the top. beautiful all right thank you for watching again uh, please consider texture um, as you're working and know that there are lots of different mediums that will help you achieve that impossible like texture with acrylics um, you can mix them with heavy body or fluid and uh, just have fun and create lots of interesting textured paintings if you have any questions make sure you email us at help at golden paints or give us a call and hope thank you for watching